Hey there, welcome to another episode of Smash JT. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the launch titles for the Nintendo Switch. As of right now, they have officially announced seven launch titles, so I'm going to talk about those in brief detail in this video. Also going to talk about the rest of the games coming out in March, so let's get to it. So today we're talking about the launch games for the Nintendo Switch. I broke it down to actual exclusives and multi-platform games because really all we're going to care about is the exclusives. I'll touch upon the multi-platform games just to let you know what they are, but as of right now the only important thing is the actual exclusives. First off, we're going to be talking about Zelda. Everyone knows about Zelda, so it's not a big surprise, but what you might actually not know is just how extremely large this world is. Nintendo talked about it being like an open world game, like, like Skyrim, which is also coming out for the Switch, but this is a much newer version, and it's much more exciting because, let's face it, it's Zelda. Eiji Anuma has acted as director and or producer for each Zelda installment since Ocarina of Time and acts as sort of a godfather to the series. Now, from an interview on Eurogamer, they asked him when this game was starting in development, and he said right after Skyward Sword was created. Now, initially this game was intended as an exclusive for the Wii U, but after the development started and the Nintendo Switch became the forefront of Nintendo's next console, Nintendo decided to create this game for the Nintendo Switch as well. That placed an extra burden on the entire team making the game, but they were able to make it work out. Since the Nintendo Switch only has one screen compared to the Wii U's two-screen interface, they had to make a few changes to the gameplay to make sure it was seamless throughout both. And Nintendo has announced that the gameplay actually runs smoother on the Nintendo Switch with faster load times and actually better graphics too, so it is the definitive version to get if you are going to get one, but not necessarily a reason to be buying the Nintendo Switch if you already have a Wii U unless you just have to have Zelda on the go. Another thing that's happening in this game that's a major shift from their normal thinking is the voice acting. Zelda has never had proper voice acting in any of the games previous to this, and frankly I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime, but after watching the intro video and the actual advertisement for it, it's a perfect fit and they make it work really well. And while this is not a Switch exclusive because it's coming out for the Wii U, I am really looking forward to it because I am getting a Switch, so I'm clearly going to be getting this game as well. Oh. Wow, I mean that game looks awesome. Next thing I'm going to be talking about is 1-2 Switch, which is actually one of the two exclusive titles for the Nintendo Switch. So initially, after this was announced at the Nintendo Switch conference in January, I had some mixed emotions with it. I'm kind of over the whole motion controls, I just want to play games, but I figured this might be a new twist on motion controls, and Nintendo's able to deliver a different experience to a lot of users that most companies don't do, so I'm willing to give them the chance here. Now this game involves a bunch of different mini games. The ones I'm showing here are like Quick Draw, Milk, like milking a cow. The next one after this is Copy Dance, which is just copying players making poses. Stuff that I guess on paper doesn't sound very fun, but I guess if you got a few drinks in you and got a few people over your house, it actually might not be too bad. Other games like Samurai Training, Table Tennis, and Eating Contest utilizing the camera on the remote, utilizing a lot of the abilities that the system's taking advantage of. In a way, it kind of reminds me of like a live-action WarioWare series. And ultimately, I feel like it's going to leave the users wanting more. And from a assumption that it's going to be a full retail $60 game, and I hear there's going to be about 20 minigames involved in it, it may be worth the money, especially if you're looking for a game to show off to your friends on your new system, but I really feel like this should have been a pack-in title. Maybe pack it in with five of the games and then have DLC for the other 15, 
but they should have offered something to come with the system. I just feel like that's a really poor business decision, just have a console with no game coming with it. Especially competing with the likes of PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Hell, even the 3DS comes with a pack-in title for less money, so... 1-2 Switch shows a lot of potential. I'm not really sure how it's going to play out in the grand scheme of things. And they really should have made that a pack-in title, but we'll see how it goes. The next game we're going to talk about for the March 3rd release is Super Bomberman R. And this one I'm actually really excited about. I love the Bomberman series, and I've always loved the puzzle aspect to it. So I'm interested to see how this plays out, especially when you're able to connect eight of these switches together with your friends. It's going to be a wild time, so I'm really looking forward to this one. So Super Bomberman R is going to be the other exclusive launch game for the Nintendo Switch. It's an action maze game developed by Konami, and it's going to be the latest installment of the Bomberman series. If you're not familiar with how Bomberman works, it's basically like a puzzle, putting bombs down, trying to trap players, getting power-ups to do special things with them, and it makes for really interesting gameplay elements. This game's going to feature a story mode spanning 50 stages and going to support cooperative gameplay with another player. The game also features an 8 player cooperative multiplayer mode, so I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm just going to briefly go over the remaining games that are going to come out for the launch date on March 3rd. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth Plus, which is an awesome game if you haven't tried it yet, it's definitely going to be the one to get. It plays similar to the old school Zelda game, but it's a lot more dark and it has a lot of different gameplay elements to it. You also have your token Just Dance 2017, which feels like that's going to be going on until the end of the planet. I'd imagine the people that are into getting Just Dance will be buying that, but not necessarily something I'm getting excited about. And the latest installment of Skylanders, this one's going to be titled Skylanders Imaginators, so it's just going to take place in the Skylanders universe with different elements in that as well. And then another one I noticed today, Constructor HD, which was originally an MS-DOS game back in the 90s, so not necessarily something I'm excited about, but it is quote-unquote a launch day title, so I figured I'd mention it here. Other games I'm really excited about for the March release window. Has Been Heroes looks like an awesome different take on a role-playing genre. I Am Setsuna, which is right now out for PlayStation and PC, but that was made by the people that made Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy, so I'm definitely looking forward to getting that one as well. And then most of all, something I didn't even know about until the presentation for the Nintendo Switch was Snipper Clips. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Snipper Clips, but this one shows off a lot of cool different gameplay elements, and I'm really looking forward to Snipper Clips as well. So there you have the seven launch titles for the Nintendo Switch. Let me know in the comments section which ones you plan on picking up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.